My name is Yulia Zavatska. I'm a professional ballroom dancer and founder of Muse, a family-owned dance gown design studio. Working in a close partnership with Crescent Clover allows us to handpick the most suitable and highest quality materials, decorative details and Swarovski crystals to create dresses and accessories that will make you shine. We also have a collection of elegant and comfortable practice wear that will make you feel your best in a studio. If you're looking for someone to design your dream glam on the dance floor that will make you stand out, check out our website. Let's talk about your vision for your next project. How are you? Well, I'm good. How are you? Good, all good. How is new life? What are you guys doing lately? New life? Yeah, uh... Not a lot and at the same time so much. <laughs> yeah. Well, first, it was very weird in the beginning. So we didn't know what to do with all this time. But I think we're very lucky because we have a, a six months old, almost seven months. So we get to spend a lot of time with him. And before yeah. all the choir started we didn't have barely any time especially Antoine didn't have any time but now we do more family time so it's good yeah so now my favorite time is actually in the morning when we wake up and we just spend I don't know hours in bed I guess just playing with him yeah so it's something I didn't have before whatsoever you just killed my question because my next question would be what your favorite part of the day <laughs> and you okay. answered before you even asked yeah, like it's nice. I, I know that's really good. Anton, tell me how it feels for you to actually be a father of the son. Oh, it's, I mean, it's awesome. It's, uh, it's a feeling that you cannot compare with anything, right? And, uh, and it's always changing, right? Because he is changing. So, and what you do with him is changing. So it's uh, keep progressing the feeling. It's, uh, but it's awesome. Like, again, it's indescribable, I guess. Right? How you can compare I don't, I don't have words to describe. <laughs> How you can compare it with life before? No, no, life before was, I mean, you just, I mean, you work, you dance, it was, of course, it was, it was still fun, like, we were making ourselves busy, we had our dancing career to take care of, but, um, so, our studio, our students, so, all of this, of course, was keeping us busy, but the moment, uh, moment you have a kid, uh, your priorities, uh, they're shifting, right? So, of course, we're still yeah. taking care, care of all the, all things that we had before but a uh, little one is just uh, giving us uh, pleasure every day right so it's when you're coming back home and you see how he's waiting for you how he's smiling when he sees you it is basically it's the best uh, the best present in every day and even if you didn't see him for two hours it feels like it's two weeks right like it feels yeah. forever each time hey uh, since you retired from dance competitions uh, you had changes in your life like you open dance studio you have a new addition into your family you're not couple anymore you're family now right like you got married like a lot of beautiful things happened to, to you um how like it's making you feel what kind of goals you have in front of you like what is your transitions made you be how did it change us like the transition yes yes, yes. um that's a very, very good question. Well, I think if we start with the first transition, when we retired from dance, we, right, we had right away the focus of the studio. And so we put all our energy into the studio. Then two years later, uh, the baby came, Daniel. And now I find that the studio is much, much better. So the studio can kind of take care of itself. And now we can actually focus like on ourselves and on our family. Because mm -hmm. when we start competing it, it felt like right away we had to jump into another big project and we couldn't really focus and spend time with ourselves and all this crazy like quarantine stuff it's almost like a like a blessing in disguise because mm -hmm. we actually get this focus on us and now instead of two of us there's three of us well actually five because we have also two two cats 
So we get to spend <laughs> so much time with each other where we could never before. Not when we were competing, not when we started the studio. So now it's really the first time. You really elegant couple you always been and even you competed and uh, I'm pretty sure you're probably already trying to give your dance love to your baby, right? So you're probably dancing three of you, I'm guessing. Uh, well, I think I definitely want Daniel to learn to dance. You know, he's already spending time in the studio and I, I play around with him. I get him to do little movements. I think it will be natural. Like I, I don't plan to force him into it. I think just because he's exposed to it all the time, he will be curious and he will want to copy. So I think it will be a natural transition. And, and I think for, for a boy, for a, a guy, it's the best thing to be able to have the skills of dance because it makes them into little gentlemen from a very, very early age. And I think any woman will want that. That's for so sure. And will be so happy. <laughs> That's for sure. Like uh, ballroom dance teaches a lot how to treat women and generally like all sides of relationship. I even can feel in my marriage with not dancer, how I can use my some dance experiences and it's making me easier to communicate with love of my life. That's for sure. Um, yeah. Uh, what would be your goal for the future with all these achievements and accomplishments you guys already have and it's amazing but what is your future projects and what you think and where you want to be in a couple of years? The dream of mine is to pursue Argentine Tango with my husband because this is a, has been like a newer passion for me and I want to go deeper into it and do different projects in, in that sphere. Yeah, you dance, especially tango lately in the last couple of years, but you dance, it feels like anytime and everywhere, we can yeah. see like little, really cute videos of you even involving your bedroom of your son, and it's very, very sweet, for sure. Um, what would be think people don't know about you? The thing is, what I think surprises um, people the most, but uh, but me when I when I open up to them it's uh, about me being uh, shy in the public, she being extremely shy. So because most of the time they see me on a dance floor, competing with Anna or doing performance with Anna, being to the students. So they see this persona, which is I think it's a quite a decent performer. But uh, all of this have to be learned, and uh, I think I'm a faker about it. That level of my confidence, which I present on the floor. So yeah, yeah, this I think was something like I said, people would get surprised when I when I talk to them about it. Mm -hmm. I used to yeah, you yeah. already, so I don't feel it. And what can you share to people about yourself? Uh, for me, well, I think most people know me as a standard dancer and now also tango. But maybe what they don't know is that I'm really dance crazy about everything. So especially. <laughs> Any kind of that, any kind of movement doesn't matter. Partner, no partner. Like I just love to understand how the body moves, and especially since we started Arthur Murray and we this, we had to go into many different styles, I I can get excited about everything. Just recently, we did a, a dance with our teachers called the Pachenga. I didn't even know what it was until one of our staff she taught it to me, and I loved it so much, and I was practicing it nonstop because I just love movement and performance and it almost, it doesn't matter what style, just dance. <laughs> I think you're really wrong that, uh, by thinking that people don't know that about you. I oh, always okay. say to everyone, uh, when we talk about you, that you a great ballroom dancer with extremely Latin personality <laughs> because <laughs> I remember even you when you were on the floor, like, coming into the connection before like Foxtrot or Quickstep, you did some kind of like Latin move because it's really like getting out from you and uh, that's for sure. It's something uh, not a really big secret. No, uh, okay. No, no, definitely not. Do you want a bigger secret? I'll come back. <laughs> a big secret. Okay, okay, so this is, uh, this is very personal. Uh, I, will, I will share that. I don't think a lot of people know that. Okay, so. I want to hear it. But you know it. So I think uh, most people know that the way we started dancing together, uh, Konstantin Antonov, he introduced us and Anton came from Russia. But maybe what people don't know is when I was 16, at the moment I first saw him, uh, that same night I wrote in my diary that I met my husband. 
Oh, oh really? I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. So you had this yeah. like you had this click right away when you saw him. Yes, like right away. And I was very, very shy at that time. I couldn't say two words. I was like, hi. And then, <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then I was just sitting quietly and my parents were doing all the talking. And then when I went to, at night, I wrote, I met my husband. And actually, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I was able to find that entry. And I showed it to Anton and he's like, you're weird. That's freaky. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So you didn't give him choice, right? Like, <laughs> no. I didn't give a choice. You don't do, you don't give a lot of choices yeah. in general. <laughs> How many years are you guys together already? So uh, 15, 15, I think, the whole 15. second, 2003, 17. Oh my God. Know, yeah. yeah, like probably, I'm in Canada 17, so probably 16 years. Yeah, 16 years. And years. how it was for you, like this, all these years, like what this um, waves of your relationships, what did you learn uh, from it? Uh, <laughs> no, it's, uh, listen, it was, of course, the relationship is like, uh, it, I'm not saying it's a work of, like, but it was up and downs in the relationship, mm -hmm. like, because we had different types of relationship, we had a business relationship, we have a dancing relationship, we have a personal rela relationship, so all those relationships, they interrelated, mm -hmm. and uh, let's say, if uh, in dancing something doesn't go well, I think our our biggest uh, strength, which we develop, is basically not allow it to affect the other part of the relationship. So um, I think I mean it was lots of fun to work on it, and I think I'm gonna make it to found the perfection. I think. Yes. You guys, you guys look oh, like yeah. soulmates. Yeah. yeah. You definitely, you definitely look like a soulmate. You look like you're meant to be together. That's that's not a question. <laughs> But you know, I, I actually think that we grew into it, that it wasn't we were like so many in the beginning. Yeah, I, yeah. even though I, I, I felt it in the beginning, he probably didn't. But then we were both quite young, like I was 16, mm -hmm. you were 22. So we really changed a lot. And also our coaches, like mostly like Jean Piero and Massimo, they mm -hmm. didn't only teach us dancing, they developed like our personalities. And I have a lot to thank to them for the way we developed. I see. What would you say would be funniest part of your personalities, which also people don't know about you? The funniest? Funniest. 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 Oh, I'm not funny, period. Yes, you're funny. Okay, so let's talk about <laughs> Anna then. <laughs> What's the funniest thing about me? About you? Uh, you being silly, I think. Uh, like, she, she has this part of personality when she just goes basically crazy. It's uh, normally you see it at the end of the our like dance parties, dance events, when kind of when we can all relax um, in the end of the day. So she just becomes silly, and most of the time it's uh, something to do with dancing. So like she said, she's a dance crazy. I think so. Yeah. Around. So because normally again you see the silence persona, which is very like um, strong, very uh, um, classy, very feminine uh, type of persona. But and afterwards when the she kind of relaxed, she shows different types of personality, she's very silly, childish kind of thing. And I love it from that one. Yeah. Well, I guess I can say the same thing to Anton that because he always, he always looks like so serious, but you know that he has like those Mickey Mouse shirts and actually I'm wearing one because he likes Mickey Mouse. I'm wearing Mickey okay, Mouse. Enough, enough, don't <laughs> Mickey Mouse shirt. So, and it, when he wears those Mickey Mouse shirts, it's like he transforms. He becomes like really relaxed and really goofy and it's like when he's with me he really really like shows off that personality or when when we're with friends it's like a totally different side of his than people people normally see on the dance floor or in the studio i can see mickey mouse is like big part of your family i remember we were looking for very first onesie for your son before he was born <laughs> with mickey mouse <laughs> That's right. yeah. okay tell me what uh was probably the most craziest experience you had in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, aside from giving birth? Yes, <laughs> I don't think it's... No, I, I don't think it's something you for majority of the people because many uh, of the families came through that. Something more yours. I guess traveling, like a... a do Some story that. if your trips or something like really crazy and funny or like scary, something dramatic. 
I mean, uh, rafting can remember. But you yeah. know, <laughs> rafting, so like this is something what we're kind of signing up every year for. Uh, it's a raft, uh, rafting trips. So, and it was pretty, pretty much all the craziest, the funniest stories actually connected to that. Uh, I mean, we had a lot of a lot of craziest stories, but so but rafting, I think this is the first thing that comes into my mind. So, uh, mine, uh, I remember the the story the most, which kind of stuck in my head when one first time on uh, on the on that run on the river, and uh, so I didn't know what to expect. So basically, we hit the rapid, and um, I think boat actually turned upside down, and uh, basically everybody ended up in the water. So it was lots of fun. We pulled ourselves back into the boat, and everybody's like so excited. We're looking around, and I don't see Anna in the boat. I'm like, what's happened? I look in the water. I don't see Anna in the water. So basically, I have a like complete shock, and my heart is starting to pounding. And the thing is, like, uh, when you go on a, on a run, so it's not just one boat. It's like a bunch of boats, like six, seven boats goes. So basically, now the boats actually pick you up, <laughs> and I just for the moment when I saw your face on another boat beside us and she was like waving and <laughs> laughing and I remember like from being completely devastated and scared for what happened I just uh, saw that uh, goofy face of her and uh, <laughs> it was probably uh, like the extreme of the emotions uh, yes. <laughs> uh, this would made I, I guess lots of fun if, if yeah. I can say yeah I remember is when we used to go to England uh, for dance lessons before the GPS time. Oh yeah! Oh my God! Yeah. So can I say that story? <laughs> and afterwards you can say, oh actually, you go for it, and afterwards I have to. Well, decide. basically he was always driving, and I, I had to hold the map and tell him which way to turn. <laughs> so I'm talking about those like uh, roll-up maps. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I always was getting it wrong because I was I, I could never see in the where the street names is. And, but I always wanted to give him confidence. So even if I didn't know exactly which way to turn, I would just tell him, right. <laughs> and, and yeah, so basically we're going for our first lesson in England. I think it was, was Lindsay Hillier, right? So and she uh, basically will live in the uh, kind of center of London and she lives like in complete uh, woods. Uh, and, uh, in, and our lesson was at 10 o'clock in the morning. So we took like, I think like two hours and a half uh, to drive just, uh, uh, Make sure we're like we don't hit the traffic and um, so we're responsible people so basically um Anna, she, this was what we found out afterwards Anna, she read the map upside down <laughs> completely upside down so every time when I, every time, exactly so every time when i was kept to touch on when she was saying to turn right i had to actually turn left so anyway uh so the trip took instead of uh, like i said we took uh, two and a half or three hours. It took us four hours to get to the lesson. So we didn't have a lesson. We just came to the end of the lesson to give the money. And that was also the first lesson we were ever having with her. So we were like, hi, our names were Anton and Anna. Nice to meet you. Here we go. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Pretty much, yes. So that's how it happened. Generally, for competitors, like in the trips, it's a lot of things going on. And even our times when we competed together and we were traveling together. It's so many like stories and so much fun we had. And now yeah. we have such a different life because we made the new people into this world and we need to bring all this fun to them and raise them good way. And it's so cool that we actually can do it together because our kids quite close in the age with each other. Yeah. So they're gonna be friends as us. It's really awesome. Guys, it was very nice to see you. I always love to see you, but this way it's even more fun. I wish you have everything you want and as quick as possible to get all your goals start to run, uh, including your son started to run. <laughs> Wait for those fun <laughs> times. <laughs> fine. Yeah, have everything good and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon in reality and we can hug each other. Yes, yes, for sure. Okay, we'll, we'll... bye. Bye-bye. Bye.